I need a speed handle for my new vise. It's a 14 millimeter hex. It came with this big bulky handle, which is the same as most vices come with, but I hate this handle. So I bought a speed handle for my older vise. This is the speed handle on my old vise. The problem I have with the new vise is the hex shaft is 14 millimeters and the most common size is 3 quarter inch. So the 14 millimeter is hard to find so I just decided to make my own. I've always used the center hole in the speed handle. I've always been able to get the vise tight enough just using the center hole. If I ever felt need to put extra torque on the vise, I would just use two hands on the speed handle. The speed handle on my old vise was about three quarters of an inch thick and six inches long. So I had some three quarter inch aluminum stock, so I'll just try to make this one basically the same size. I'm going to use a end mill to clean up all four sides of the aluminum stock. Now I'll use the edge finder and DRO to find the center of the workpiece. There's a free online tool that you can use called Omni Calculator and it'll give you all of your dimensions. You can use it in metric or inches. I used it in inches. 14 millimeters is 0.5512 in inches. So the only number I had to plug in was the 0.5512 on the S dimension, which is the short diagonal, and then it filled in all the other measurements. It gave me more information than I really need, but it's a handy tool. I used the hole setting on my DRO and set it for six holes that would represent the six corners of the hex. I had to recalculate the radius dimension to compensate for the thickness of the drill bit. I like the sound feature that came on the new DRO on the new milling machine. It beeps to let you know that you're getting close to your next position.
Now I'm just double checking to make sure I'm at 14 millimeters. Now I'm just using a half inch drill bit to hog out all the material for the hex. I'm using a 3 16 end mill to finish out the hex. The DRO still had my center position, so I just went an equal distance from center on each side. So next I have to rotate the vise 60 degrees to do the next two sides. When I rotated the vise it lost its center position so I had to use the edge finder and the DRO to reestablish a center. Now I have to rotate the vise again 60 degrees to do the last two sides. You can see how when you rotate the vise, you lose the center position. So again, I have to use the DRO and the edge finder to reestablish the center position. Now I can finish out the last two sides. I removed the vise and put the rotary table on the milling machine and got it centered up with the spindle. And then on the workbench, I laid out where I want to put the hole for the handle. I center punched the layout and then I used a carbide pointer in the center punch hole to make sure it was in perfect alignment with the spindle and the rotary table. So now I'm going to use a half inch carbide mill to round off the corners of the handle. I used a light cut just to make sure everything looked right before I finish it out.
While I had it set up in the rotary table, I decided to add a radius. Next, I'll drill and tap it for 3 8 16 threads. Just for looks and not really any function, I'm going to put a larger hole in this end of the handle. I still have it in the vise. I'm going to finish the radius on all the straight runs. Now it's back in the rotary table to round off the other end of the handle. To get the alignment on the end that has the 3 8 threaded hole, I used a 3 8 threaded stud mounted in a 3 8 collet, and I used that to center it on the rotary table. Now I can cut the last radius.
The last thing to do for this part of the handle is to drill a hole for a set screw to hold the handle onto the vise. I wanted to use a shoulder bolt to hold the knob on the handle and I checked McMaster car that's usually where I get those kind of things but they didn't really have what I needed as far as a shoulder bolt goes so I'm just going to go a different route I found these half inch seamless sleeves it's half inch outside diameter for 3 8 bolt so for the bolt I have 3 8 by 2 inches long stainless steel hex head cap screws so now I can start on the knob end of the handle the knob is going to be two and a half inches long I need to cut a half inch hole all the way through the knob and then I'll use a boring bar to finish out the hole. It needs to be slightly bigger than a half inch to give clearance for the half inch sleeve to make the knob easy to rotate. I'm going to use the cutoff tool to establish the two and a half inch mark for the end of the knob. So now I need to measure how far in I need to cut to make the hole larger for the stop washer to hold the knob on.
So here's the finished speed handle. It was a fun project.